Thanks, Steve, uh, and thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, I'm looking through how the build up to this fight and the uh, PBC face to face and uh, the face off you had with Manny in the press conferences. I'm noticing that you are you're having a lot of fun. You're enjoying the 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 promotion of this fight. Does it feel good, you know, just being back in the group, preparing for fights, you know, being in this type of environment instead of having long rehab for injuries and surgeries that you've had for the last couple of years? Uh, definitely, man. I mean, I'm living out my dream. This is my passion. And, you know, I didn't do a lot of interviews. I didn't do a lot of talk in my inactivity because I like to talk positive. I like to talk action, you know. As being an inactive fighter, to me, there's not a lot to talk about. What am I going to talk about? My struggle? What am I going to talk about? My, my, my depression? My sadness? What am I going to talk about? You know, so at the end of the day, um, I'm really, really happy to be back in, in the sport. Um, it's a beautiful opportunity. It's a dream come true, and I'm just back living my dream. So, you know, I mean, I love the sport of boxing, and – I mean, I want to have fun. This is my job. I mean, when you, when you go to work, you should enjoy yourself, you know? If you don't enjoy your job, you should get a new job. I love my job. And so, you know, you think it's your entertainment. This is my fucking entertainment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not only that, I mean, the welterweight division, you know, you're. It's, this is a great time for the 147-pound division. It's very low to the top with – you, Manny, Spence, Cropper, Porter. Do you view this fight as the one that does show who the best welterweight in the world is, or do you feel like that's something that needs to be decided with more fights among that group of five that I mentioned down the road? Don't know, don't care. It's not my job. It's your job to report opinionated things, okay? At the end of the day, I'm living a dream. I'm happy. we making money. We're making history in a sport that I've always wanted to make history in. All I want to do is leave my mark so that when I walk out from here, I can hold my head up high, you know. All I want is for one day, 20 years from now, when people talk boxing, they'll argue this, they'll argue that, but there's going to be one dude who said, you know who I really like? Man, I like that kid Keith one time Thurman. You know, that's, that's my ultimate goal, man. To just be amongst the names, to be a great, to be amongst the names so that there's some fan who will never forget what I've done. Thank you, Keith, and best of luck on July 20th against Manny Pacquiao. I wish you the best. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Norman, Norman Palestine from the Los Angeles Times. Please go ahead. Hey, Keith, thanks for your time. Hey, I was wondering in uh, evaluating the current Manny, is the 40-year-old Manny, of his three three fights, Matisse or Horn, Matisse, and Broner, are, 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 is one more important than the other, or or have you looked at beyond those last three fights? Um, you know, at the end of the day, he's come back strong after a loss. You mm-hmm. know. Maybe he underestimated Horn. Maybe he really did fall uh, ill uh, mm-hmm. overseas. They they said that he was kind of sick the week mm-hmm. of the fight. And obviously, no fighter is going to pull out of a fight. Um, you know, Styles makes fights. Like I said, he could have underestimated Horn. He could have not trained the same way. Uh, mm-hmm. He looked terrific against Matisse. Mm-hmm. Um, and he dominated Adrian Broner. You know, mm-hmm. so obviously... Uh, he doesn't think he's done. He doesn't like talk about retirement. Um, mm-hmm. So he's going to come to dominate Keith one-time Thurman, which is something no one's ever done. Right, um, right. He also is inspiring to win a world title that he's never won it throughout his whole career because the last mm-hmm. time he fought for the Super WBA was against Floyd Mayweather, upon which mm-hmm. he suffered mm-hmm. a loss. Mm-hmm. So this is his second opportunity uh, to acquire something that he's never acquired before throughout his whole career. So mm-hmm. he's got a lot going for him. He wants to prove his greatness, prove his legacy is one that will never be forgotten, even though it cannot be forgotten. Uh, win, loss, draw, 
it, it could not be forgotten because he's accomplished so much in this uh, sport of boxing. But he still is reaching for greatness at the age of 40, and it's admirable. I, mm. I admire that within him. I was impressed with his performance against Adrian Broner. It was a week before mm. me. After mm. witnessing him fight, I got out into the streets, and mm. I ran at 1 in the morning, you know? You did that time, huh? Because I did because he's, I was a week before my fight, and mm. I just watched a 40-year-old man beat a young man, and it was really expiring for me because I'm coming off of injuries and I'm coming off of lack of activity. And, you know, Manny's just done so much, but he was he, he wanted to do more. And, of course, I'm young. I, I definitely want to do more. And on the 20th, I'm going to show you more. All right. Well, can, you, can you envision yourself fighting at four years old? Hell no. <laughs> that's quick quick man my my grandfather never liked that i was going to be a, a boxer my my uh, grandfather on my father's side he never liked that i was going to be a boxer um my my family's all from ohio um mm-hmm. outside of cleveland uh my my grandfather was even a mason and mm-hmm. he told me he said if you're going to do it boy he said get in and get out Mm-hmm. And he meant he meant it in a twofold way. He meant if you can mm-hmm. stop him, stop him, and get out the ring early, and mm-hmm. make your money, and mm-hmm. get out a boxing while you still got sense and you can talk straight. Because you know the big thing about yeah. fighters back in the day is the punch drunk syndrome. Even yeah. Van Getty used to talk to me about it. And um, luckily, I'm more than a brawler. I am a boxer, right. and you know, I'm gonna do my best to not take too many shots come July 20th. Yeah, well, that's good advice. Sometimes that's harder to do, but 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 I but but your grandfather sounds it's not like he he gave you some good advice. Thanks hey, a, a lot, few man. More, a few more of these a few more of these paychecks. We ain't gonna be here when we're forty years old. Believe that. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't need a hundred million in life. I just need I just need <laughs> okay. a little bit of moolah. I just yeah. need some moolah. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Rob Huff from Fight News. Please go ahead. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Just had a little problem on this end. Um, You know, you're 30 years old. You've had a decade younger than Pacquiao. You've had fewer than half the fights he's had. There's some conventional wisdom that – you're not going to take it easy in the early rounds, but maybe you save a little something, something for the, the championship rounds and see if a 40 year old man can take your best heat in nine, 10, 11, and 12. Um, so I'm curious to hear from you and your trainer if, if that's, um, that's been part of your thinking. At the end of the day, I'm going to do to him what I did to Danny Garcia. What's good? I'm going to hit him as soon as I can hit him. What's good? You good? Because I'm good. You ready to fight? Because I'm here. You know? This is, this is, Freddie Roach is the only one that talks shit. It reminds me of the Danny Garcia fight. You let your trainer talk for you. For him, it was his daddy and his trainer. It don't matter, man. You know, Pacquiao knows it's the hands that do all the talking. Bop! You know, from the opening bell. Ben Getty said... Ben Getty said, go out there and show them your power, boy. He said, I don't care who it is. He goes, when you hit them, they're going to do a pretty little dance. You know, I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to destroy a legend and to create my own legacy. How can I not? How can I not, Babe Ruth, step up to the plate, point, point for it, and start swinging? How can I not go for it? You know what I mean? I I got to, oh, I'm not afraid to let it go. If Manny Pacquiao's the man that beats me, he's the man that beats me. And I'm going to shake his hand after the fight, congratulate him. It is what it is. But when Keith Thurman steps into the ring, you're dealing with Keith Thurman, and he's a bad man. <laughs> 